praise the Lord, praise the Lord, I'm Pastor Michael Jakes, and welcome to The Bible Speaks Live, once again coming to you with a word for our hearts, with a word, with a word for our souls tonight. Uh, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is able to do for you what only He can do, and we bless His name, and we thank Him for all that He is doing, for all that He has done. We want to honor Him, we want to praise Him tonight, because He is worthy. He is absolutely worthy, and so we honor Him and we praise Him Tonight, we are streaming live tonight on Spreaker.com, and we are streaming live tonight on Facebook, amen? And so we bless the Lord, and we thank Him for what He is doing. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, we begin, in our Bible study, we begin a brand new study entitled, Fake Views. Fake Views, that's right, Fake Views, a practical study on the danger of false teaching. We'll talk more about that at the other end of this particular podcast but right now we want you to settle in stay with us for a little while as we get into the word of god um you can go to our website also uh you can go to our website at that's the word.org you can also go to our youtube channel and you can subscribe there you can also find all of our podcasts lined up neatly for you on spreaker.com that is spreaker Dot com. So we bless we bless the Lord for what he is doing in our midst. Amen. Let's pray and we'll get right into the word for this evening. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. Once again, you have allowed us to uh, come before you. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. And Lord, we pray for the next few minutes, Lord, that your Holy Spirit might settle in over us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that you might anoint this word as it goes out. Lord, I pray you might draw those who need to hear this word to this place on the World Wide Web right now. Lord, have your way. Bless, encourage, enlighten, convict. Lord, do what only your word can do, even right now. Lord, I bless you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So we bless the Lord. We want to go to the book of Jude. Jude, that little book right before you get to the book of Revelation in your New Testament. The book of Jude. Since it only has uh, one chapter, if you want to call it a chapter, we're just going to refer to it. Just go to Jude 20. Jude 20. You want to say Jude chapter 1 verse 20, that's fine. But go to Jude 20. Jude 20. And we'll start in verse number 20. We'll go down to verse number 24. It says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves... On your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse number 22. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Let's go on to verse number 25. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Lord, may you once again bless the reading of your word. Let me ask you a question. Are you building yourself up? Are you building yourself up right? We want to talk tonight about Building yourself right. Building yourself right. Now, this entire book of Jude, Jude, the brother of Jesus, has dedicated himself to bringing down the house of those who teach false doctrine. And if any one of us are not careful, any one of us can become a victim of false doctrine. In order to not become a victim of false doctrine, you must first know the doctrine yourself. You must know, first of all, the Word of God. It is very important that you maintain a good relationship with the Word of God. Because in the Word of God, you're going to find truth. Anytime you begin to depart from the Word of God, you will run into trouble. You will run into trouble. But now, after having pinpointed the problem of false teaching in the church, now, Jude turns his attention to those who are walking in light. 
to those who are walking in truth, to those who have not become victims of false doctrine. And he begins in verse number 20, and he says, But you, beloved, that lets us know he's talking to the child of God now. But you, beloved, and he starts off, he says, This is what you need to do. And obviously, the words that Jude uses to these Christians, they also apply to us, of course. All the words of Scripture are to be used for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And so we know that these words apply to we who are alive right now. He says, but you, beloved, he says, building up yourselves, building up yourselves. And that's very important that we know that once we get saved, there is something that we must do. There is a work that we must perform. We do not get saved. We do not give our life to the Lord and just sit back and lay back and let God do everything. We know that without him, we can do nothing, but we have to do something. And so he says, what you need to do, you need to build yourselves up. Build yourselves up. How do you properly build yourself up? You see, because there is a right way to build yourself up. And there is a wrong way to build yourself up. Now, that statement has sort of a catch to it. Because the wrong way to build yourself up is not building yourself up at all. You see, when we're talking about false doctrine, false teaching, false teaching will never, and I repeat, false teaching will never build you up. False teaching at its root, will always stagnate you. It will stagnate you. It will stop you in your tracks. If you were on a road of spiritual growth, and you were growing, and all of a sudden, false teaching comes to you, and you receive it, and you accept it, your growth, your spiritual growth, will cease. It will cease for several reasons. Your spiritual growth will cease because the Holy Ghost is not akin to, he is not a part of anything that is error or that is false or that is fake. The Holy Spirit is not involved. And so therefore he will not, he will, he will suspend. He will not leave you. The Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you, but he will suspend his work of helping you to grow. In the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have latched on to error. And error in its fullest form, in its error in its fullest form, will always pull away from who Jesus is. Pull away from who Jesus is. And as we'll learn tonight, the foundation, the foundation of the Christian faith, the foundation of Christianity, the foundation of the word of God, the foundation of who we are is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the foundation. That's who we are. That's, that's the basis of all that we do. He is the foundation. And so when you move away from that truth, you move away from growth. The Holy Spirit will not be able to do for you all that he could do. Remember, he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. But when you latch on to something else, when you put your faith in another place, you frustrate the grace of God. And the Holy Spirit is stunted in your life. He does not disappear. He does not leave you. But he is stunted. His his. His hands, in a sense, are tied because your faith has been removed from Christ to something else. So it's very important that we understand that we must build ourselves up. Remember what it says? Build up yourselves, something that you must do, something that I must do. Build up yourself on or in your most holy faith. Now, there are several ways, and we've just disclosed uh, one of the ways uh, that that phrase, uh, the meaning of that particular phrase. But to build up yourself on your most holy faith, in some respects, it can mean 
to use your most holy faith to build yourself up. Use your most holy faith to build yourself up. How do you use your most holy faith to build yourself up? We'll talk about that. Also, the second meaning, which is very similar, worded in an entirely different way, but it has the same basic meaning. To build yourself up on your most holy faith or in your most holy faith means to build yourself up on the foundation of your most holy faith. What is the foundation of your most holy faith? We've just said it. Jesus Christ and him crucified. The other way that we said, to use your most holy faith, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified, to build yourself up. So it all comes out to the same thing. It must be the basis, the foundation, the bottom line of who we are in Christ is Christ and him crucified. That's what it's all about. That is what Christianity is all about. So he says, build yourself up on this. If you go to the book of, if you go to the book of Second uh, Second Peter, I was reading this earlier uh, in the day. Second Peter, uh, chapter number one, talks about adding to our life several things, and that that word add has the has the connotation of building, building, add to, build up. They they have basically the same meaning. And, and here is is what. Uh, the Apostle Peter says he says in verse number 5 of uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 he says and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith once again faith is the underlying foundation of who we are faith, faith Jesus Christ and him crucified so he says add to this he says add to your faith virtue, to your virtue, knowledge to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Then he says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, there is some adding that we need to do. There is some building up of ourselves that we need to do. But it all begins with having the proper foundation. You cannot build on what is not true. You cannot build on a faulty foundation. You must build upon the cornerstone of Christian doctrine. The cornerstone of Christian doctrine is, I repeat, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That is the cornerstone of Christian doctrine. All doctrine emanates from there. Why? Because that is the basis of the entire Word of God. The Word of God is about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So how do we build ourselves up? How do we build ourselves up? In addition to those things that we just read in 2 Peter, how, this, how we are to build upon one thing upon another, one thing upon another. Here, in verse number 20, he says, build yourself up in your most holy faith, on your most holy faith. And he says, number one, number one, praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. What does it mean to pray in the Holy Ghost? He says, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to pray? In the Holy Ghost. Now, some will look at that phrase, and I am Pentecostal. I don't. I, I'm not ashamed to say that I am Pentecostal. I may be a little conservative for some, for the taste of some, but I do consider myself Pentecostal. I, don't, I try not to get caught up uh, in denominational things. I'm a Bible believing Christian. I believe that the Bible, that Pentecost is is where the Bible leads, because we have the Book of Acts, which we cannot erase and those things within the book of Acts are still for today so I consider myself Pentecostal but here's what it says praying in the Holy Ghost and if you, if you believe in speaking in tongues and such things as, as that which I do you might tend to believe that praying in the Holy Ghost means that we are to pray in tongues that we are to pray in tongues 
that we ought to pray in our, as some Pentecostals put it, pray in our prayer language. But this statement does not have that in view. That is not what is being spoken of here. To pray in the Holy Spirit does not mean to pray in tongues. The word tongues is nowhere found in these verses. So, therefore, let's not read tongues into this statement. To pray, to pray in the Holy Ghost, to pray in the Holy Spirit simply means to, to, to pray in conjunction with the Holy Ghost. It means to pray uh, in alignment with the Holy Ghost. It means to pray in agreement with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, should should stimulate, the Holy Ghost uh, should infuse and empower all of our prayers. We can't pray without the Holy Ghost. You know that scripture that says, you know that scripture in, first, in, in Romans rather, uh, that speaks about there are times that we do not know how to pray as we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit intercedes, he intervenes uh, uh, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And some would also think that that means speaking in tongues. But there is no clear indication that that is even talking about speaking in tongues. But the Holy Ghost will, will intercede for us when we don't know what to pray. Have you ever been in that place in your life where you just don't know? What, not that you don't know, but have you ever been to that place in your life where you just can't pray? I cannot be alone. Sometimes you just can't pray. The words, the words can't come. Maybe you feel overwhelmed. Maybe you maybe you feel that there's just too much on your plate. I don't know, but sometimes that it, we come to that place, we come to that season where prayer just becomes difficult. We already know, you must already know, that prayer is a place where the enemy does not want you to go. Prayer is not the place where the enemy would have you to be. He does not want you to pray. Because prayer is, as we said, prayer is where you will become empowered. Prayer is where the Holy Ghost will begin to speak to you. Prayer is the place where the Holy Ghost will begin to direct you and lead you and show you the things that you need to do. Prayer is not always about supplication and asking the Lord what to do and how to do it and Lord, I need you. Those prayers are fine, but when you get down, my experience has been, when I get down to pray for myself, for my own needs, my experience has been that the Lord will, will always, almost without fail, begin to direct my spiritual attention someplace else, away from myself. It happens almost without fail as I begin to pray this person comes on my heart and that person comes on my heart and I see names and I see faces and I hear voices of individuals as I pray for me. So what do you do? You pray for the other people as the Lord brings them to you. So while you came before the Lord uh, uh, in supplication because you have a need, you begin to become an intercessor. You begin to become an intercessor. And rather than praying for yourself, you begin to pray for the needs of others. That's what can happen when you really, really get down to pray. The Lord will begin to show you different individuals that need prayer other than yourself, beside yourself, or more than yourself. And you must pray for those individuals. So praying in the Holy Ghost, once again, is praying in alignment with him. It is praying in conjunction with him, and it is praying in agreement with him. That is how we pray in the Holy Ghost. And he will meet your need. He will meet your need as you come before him. But don't allow the enemy to subtract prayer out of your life. That's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you, the enemy wants you to, to just abandon the place of prayer in your life. When we go to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14, you know what it says. It says, if my people, my people, which are called by my name, talking to the child of God, he says, says number one, shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. And then he says, and pray. And pray. The enemy wants to keep you from prayer. Then he says, 
pray and seek my face. That's seeking after his presence. He doesn't want you to have an Isaiah experience. The enemy does not want you to have an Isaiah chapter 6 experience. Where you begin to see yourself for who you are. And you begin to cry out. And once you cry out, the Lord begins to empower you. And equip you. That's not where the enemy wants you to be. You see, it's not when, when it comes to prayer, it's not about, it's not about quantity. It's not about how long you pray. It's not about praying for one hour and two hours and three hours, which is nothing wrong. And, and we've done this. But it's about the quality of your prayer. You can pray for a few minutes, but you can sense the power and the presence of God. And the Lord can meet you right there. But you can pray for hours. And hours and struggle and get up and only know that your prayers have hit the ceiling and come back down upon you. You see, praying is what the enemy does not want you to do. So he says here in verse number 20 of Jude, he says, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You see, without the Holy Ghost, without the Holy Ghost, We cannot pray in faith without the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost when you pray. Without the Holy Ghost, you cannot uh, you cannot pray with uh, uh, with any fervency. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effectual fervent prayer. Finally, you cannot uh, you cannot. Uh, without the Holy Ghost, you cannot uh, you cannot pray in freedom. Freedom. The Holy Spirit, where the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. And so we need the Holy Ghost in our prayers. As we look to the Lord as the object of we use that word as the object of our faith as the foundation of all that we are and all that we do we will we will experience his peace we will experience his power we will experience his freedom but we have to do it God's way we have to do it his way as we move on in verse number 21 he says to keep yourselves he says, and we're talking tonight about building yourselves right. Building yourselves right. Secondly, he says in verse number 21, he says, keep yourselves in the love of God. You want to build yourself right? You got to keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. How do you keep yourself in the love of God? What does he mean? He's talking about keeping yourself. And once again, it's yourself. We talk about building yourself. It's something that you must do. There are things that you must do to cause yourself to be built up. And he says, keep yourselves. The Bible says that we are kept by the power of God. And the Bible says here to keep yourselves. And where keep is the same word. One says, God keeps us. And the second here says that we are to keep ourselves in the love of God. So which is which? They go in conjunction. Why? Because keeping yourself in the love of God is talking about living a life of obedience. Living a life of, of faithfulness. It is keeping yourself within the realm and circle of his love. Now, if you do something wrong, if you are disobedient, it doesn't mean that you uh, remove yourself from his love. The Bible says that nothing can separate us from his love. Romans chapter number 8. Nothing shall separate us. Tribulation, or let, let's go there real quick. Let's go to Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. And let's start in verse number Thirty-seven. 
Romans chapter 8, starting in verse number 37, says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse number 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's not talking about our love for him. That's talking about his love for us. Nothing will stop him from loving me. Nothing. Not one thing. And so keeping yourselves in the love of God means to always, always keep yourself under the awareness, under the knowledge that he loves me. And when I know that he loves me, I'm going to be faithful to him. When I know that he loves me, I am going to desire obedience to him. Now we have to know, because we are human, because we are in this mortal flesh, we know, you know, that your obedience is not going to be perfect. As much as we desire it, our obedience is not going to be perfect. Because we have this ever-present sin nature that desires to do everything opposite of that which God would have us to do. And there will be times, there will be moments where we will sin. That's just how it is. But we don't stay there. We don't stay in sin. The Bible says in 1 John that we, in 1 John chapter 3, that we cannot sin. In other words, we do not practice sin. We don't wallow in it. We don't rest in it. We don't lay in it. When we sin, the Bible says, a righteous man, a righteous man may fall and get up many times. He gets up. We don't stay down. So we must keep ourselves in the love of God. Know that he loves me in spite of myself. He loves me. He loves you in spite of you. In spite of your sin, he loves you. He loves you. So build yourself up knowing that you have a God who loves you beyond measure. Loves you beyond measure. He says, keep yourself in the love of God. And then he says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What does that mean? If you want to build yourself up, if you want to build yourself up on your most holy faith, based on your most holy faith, he says, look for, look for, look for what? The mercy of God. It's talking about living expectantly. Living expectantly. Expect the Lord to move. Expect the Lord to work. Once again, we're talking about faith. Expect Him to move. Live with an air of anticipation of what God is going to do. Looking for the mercy of God. This is also, this is all reminiscent of speaking about the rapture. The Bible says that we should look for, expect him to come. The Bible calls the rapture of the church, calls it the blessed hope. We look forward to it. John says in the last chapter of the book of Revelation, he says, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. The New Testament saints, when Paul was speaking about these things, they thought, and Paul himself may have thought, that the coming of the Lord was imminent. Meaning it was going to come soon. It is still imminent. He has not come yet. But Christ is coming ladies and gentlemen. And we are to be in anticipation. Waiting for, expecting, anticipating him to come. Oh yes. He is coming. 
there have been many false prophets, many false prophets who have come and spoken some things over the years. You may know of some of them who have said some things that Jesus uh, came already. Or some say that Jesus is not coming. There are some who mock the coming of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says there will be mockers in the last day. Talking about where is the promise of his coming. But there's a reason. But there is a reason why Christ has not come yet. He may come before this podcast is done. But there's a reason why he has not come yet. And he explains that. Peter explains that. He says the reason why the Lord has not come yet because it's not about slackness as some count slackness. But the Bible says that he is not willing that any should perish. He is long-suffering to us because he is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. How long? Until the last person who is to get saved gets saved before the trumpet sounds. There will be others who will be saved after the trumpet sounds. When the church is gone, others will be saved. But there are yet more to be saved. Yet more to be saved. And so we must be ready to reach out and touch those who don't know him. That's why in the next few verses, he talks about, he gets into evangelism evangelism now remember that he has been speaking up until this time before we get to verse number 20 he was talking to individuals who were either caught up in false teaching or who are false teaching remember he puts them down I mean he lays he lays the gauntlet down on false teachers in these in these uh, verses before we got to verse 20 he puts the gauntlet down. But there are some who are involved in these false teachings who need to get out. Maybe the false teachers who don't know the Lord, maybe maybe there's no way out for them. Maybe, maybe. But there's always an opportunity to come back. And here's what, here's what he says in verse number 22. We're talking about building ourselves up. You want to build yourselves up? First of all, let's start from the beginning. You want to build yourself up, you need to have the proper foundation. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Then we said that you must pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in alignment and agreement uh, uh, with the Holy Ghost in conjunction with him. And thirdly, we talked about keeping yourself in the love of God through obedience to him. With the knowledge, through faithfulness to him and through the knowledge of his coming back again. Keeping yourself in that's looking for, rather looking for the mercy of God. That's talking about looking for the coming of the Lord and expecting the Lord to work at all times. But now he gets into evangelism in verse number 23. He says, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Another virgin says, have mercy on those who doubt. Have mercy on those who doubt. You see, if you want to build yourself up, talking about building yourself up, if you want to build yourself up, you must reach out. You must reach out. See, this is the whole reason why you have been born again. I don't want you to think that the whole reason why you, are, you and I are born again is because, so that we can go to heaven. That's a byproduct. It's going to happen. When the trumpet sounds or before the trumpet sounds, we're going to leave this body, we're going to leave this earth, and we're going to be with the Lord. That's going to happen. But while we're here, while we're here, Jesus told a parable about occupying until he comes. We must occupy. And occupying is not busy work. It's not busy work. Occupying is is being busy about doing the Father's business. Do what the Lord has called you to do. And one of the things that the Lord has called us to do is to reach out. Reach out. And he says, of some have compassion. Have mercy on those who don't know the Lord. Have mercy. We must speak the truth 
We must be honest. That does not, we do not, we do not turn our back on those who need the Lord. We speak the truth. And speaking the truth means just that. Speaking the truth. Sometimes the world is not going to agree with the things that we say. But we do not say the things that we say because we have a hatred for them. It ought to be because we have a love for them and we want to see them make heaven their home. And so we have to tell them the truth. We have to tell them the truth. We have to tell them who Jesus is. We must. We must. It's not what the world wants. It's not what the enemy wants. And of our souls. Have mercy on those who doubt. Even if you use that translation. There are many who are in a crossroads. Who don't know whether this is right or that is right. They don't know whether this is true or that is true. Maybe something has happened in their life. But they just don't understand what's going on. And maybe they begin to question God question who God is and we have to understand these things and we need to have compassion show mercy that's reaching out another aspect of reaching out he says in verse number 23 he says and others he says say with fear this is all about a reaching out Save them with fear. We must always be on the lookout. Understanding what the enemy can do. Understanding what sin has done to certain individuals. Sin has made certain individuals blind. Sin has made certain individuals uh, completely block out who God is. Who Christ is and what he has done. They are completely oblivious to their own condition completely but we must save them with fear with a with a particular uh reverence in other words we must be direct we must be we must be tenacious and we must be vigorous we gotta pull them out we gotta pull them out we have to understand the only option if folk who don't know the Lord stay in the place where they are they will spend an eternity in hell they will spend an eternity in hell that's why he goes on to say he says pulling them out of the fire he's talking about the fire of destruction the fire of hell the fire of eternal fire Save them with fear. You gotta be vigorous. Gotta go, gotta do it. Pull them out of the fire. And then he says, hating even the garment spotted with flesh. And that's gonna be our fourth point. It's gonna be our fourth point. We're talking about building ourselves up. We must maintain. He says, hate the garment spotted by the flesh. Sin, carnality. And it means we need to maintain a hatred for sin. You want to build yourself up? Maintain a hatred for sin. You build yourself up. Hate what God hates. Hate what God hates. Hate even the garment spotted, spotted with sin. It's talking about the works of the flesh, spotted by the flesh. It's talking about the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh. Let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians. And we'll go to Galatians chapter number, Galatians chapter number five. Galatians chapter number 5 Here's what it says Verse number 19 Now the works of the flesh are manifest Which are these 
adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. These are the works of the flesh. And he says, hate the garment spotted by the flesh. We need to remove ourselves from these types of activities. We must not be a part of the works of darkness. The Bible says that we as Christians, we ought to reprove them. Bring them to light. Be the light. Be the light that banishes the darkness. That's what we ought to do. The Bible says that we ought to uh, have the armor of light. The armor of light. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. The Bible says that we are uh, a city set upon a hill. And a city set upon a hill cannot be hid. We do not take our, our lights and put them under a basket or a bushel. We must shine. We must shine. And the way we shine is to hate the garment spotted by the flesh. Here's how, uh, uh, here's how the New Testament puts it. And this is, once again, we are not going to get this perfect. We are not going to get it perfect. But here's what he says. He says, don't even, he, he says, avoid even the appearance of evil. If something looks wrong, we are not to be a party to it. How does that work? We have to we have to go to school, we have to go to work, we have to live our daily lives. But yet and still we must maintain, we must maintain our attitude, our lifestyle of holiness. Be ye holy as I am holy. Be ye perfect. As your heavenly father is perfect. That is talking about maintain a level of maturity that is acceptable unto the Lord. That's what we must do. Hating even the garment, garment spotted by the flesh. This is how you build yourself up. Let's go over those again. Building yourself up means it means having the proper foundation. Having the proper foundation. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Secondly, it's about praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in alignment, conjunction, and in agreement with the Spirit of God. Next, it means keeping yourself in the realm and the circle of His love. Know that He loves you beyond measure, more than anything. Next, He says, look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Expect the Lord. To do great things Anticipate the Lord doing great things And look for The coming of the Lord The blessed hope Have compassion On those Out of Christ Have compassion on those who are in Christ Who are involved in teachings That are Not scriptural Have compassion Have mercy Others save with fear Be more vigorous have that, have that tenacious attitude to pull them out of the place where they are. Pull them out of the fire. Because they have one foot in. They have one foot in. Pulling them out of the fire. And finally, hate the garments body by the flesh. In other words, in other words, maintain a hatred for sin. Now when we go to verse 24 as we close out, now we bless him. Now we give him honor. Now we give him glory. As we build ourselves up on our most holy faith. Unto him who is able. He is able. Mm. He is able. Unto him who is able. To keep you. From falling. Always remember. That you serve a God that is able to keep you from falling. Always remember that you don't have to fall. 
Here it is. You will fall. You will because you will. But you can keep you from falling. Remain obedient. Desire. Desire holiness. Keep your faith anchored in Christ and who he is. He says he can keep you from falling. And to present you faultless. Remember he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. And when he does come, we will be changed, the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And we will be habitable for heaven. We will, we will be presented faultless before the presence of his glory <laughs> with exceeding joy. When you get there, it will be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. I feel like singing. It will be joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has never yet been told. When we get there. When we see him. When we see him. We will know. When we see him. We will understand. He will present us faultless. Sinless. He will present us. Before the presence of his glory. Another song says, Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass home at last ever to rejoice. You're going to see him one day. You're going to see him one day. And you'll be seeing him faultless. And your joy, your cup, is going to run over. To the only wise God, verse number 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, our Savior, your Savior, the one who saved you, the one who called you, the one who will keep you, to our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and and forever. Amen. And amen. And amen. Those are powerful words. That's a powerful prayer. That's a powerful a doxology. At the end. The only wise God, our Savior. Glory, majesty, dominion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Right. By placing your faith in Christ and what He has done. Don't put your faith on a faulty foundation. Don't put faith in error faith on truth. Truth. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name tonight. We thank you once again. You've allowed us to speak your word. Lord, we pray that as we wait for your coming, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you might continue to allow us to build ourselves up in the faith that is founded in you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we look to you as being the author and finisher of our faith, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we place our faith squarely on you and what you have done for us. You have purchased by your blood our victory, Lord Jesus. And we bless you and we thank you for it. We give you glory and honor and dominion, both now and all the days of our life, Lord Jesus. We're not going to ever turn from you, Lord Jesus. We're going to continue to lift you up and bless your name. Lord, help us to be built up properly with our faith in the right place. Maybe you're watching or listening tonight and you don't know what we speak. You don't know the Lord for yourself. You don't have that assurance. You don't have that peace. You don't have that knowledge of knowing that you are safe in his arms. 
All you need to do is to pray. All you need to do is to pray. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Lord, indwell me by your spirit. Lord, I want to live for you. And Lord, I believe that you died for me on the cross. And I thank you for all you've done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. We bless the name of the Lord tonight. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank him for his word. We thank him for all that he's done. We want to bless the Lord. We want to let you know uh, that we can be heard on Spotify, uh, Spreaker.com, Google Podcasts, iTunes, uh, and iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also uh, go to our YouTube channel. Uh, just type in That's the Word Ministries or Pastor Michael Jackson to bring you directly to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can subscribe. You can join uh, many others who have subscribed to our channel already. And I know you'll be blessed by what you find there. there you'll find our podcasts uh, both in uh, video and audio form. You'll find several other things up there. We have over, uh, we have hundreds of uh, videos there on our YouTube channel. Uh, we want to shout out to our friends on Periscope, our friends on Facebook. We thank you for joining us on tonight. We thank you for stopping by just for a little bit. We pray that you'll be able to continue to support us uh, with your viewership and with your prayers. Uh, we need your prayers, so we thank the Lord uh, for what he is uh, doing. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night we will begin in our Wednesday night Bible study, we will begin a brand new study series entitled Fake Views, Fake Views, a practical study on the danger of false teaching. We'll talk about the uh, the importance of sound doctrine. We'll talk about discerning truth from error, the marks of false doctrine, and an overview of the Christian faith. And we'll have to, along the way, we'll name names and, and talk about some of the aberrant uh, doctrines that exist today uh, So Bring a Bible uh, Bring an open mind and open heart And be prepared to learn uh, From the word of God We look forward uh, to our study beginning tomorrow night Once again, fake views A practical study On the danger of false teaching And it is dangerous And rampant in the church Today Amen also, we want to remind you, don't forget, Thursday night, you can go over to the Bible Study Club, uh, and you can be a part of the Bible Study of Clarence and Diana Haynes. You'll find their practical, uh, solid, and powerful biblical principles for you to live by, and I guarantee that you will be blessed. That's Thursday night at 8 o'clock at the Bible Study Club on Facebook. Go to their, go to their Facebook page, you'll get more information about how you can be a part of the Bible Study Club. Amen? So we thank you. We thank you for listening. We thank you for watching. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for being with us. God bless you.